Hey there, Neutron Tech crew. We're back with something absolutely wild that's going to make your jaw drop. Don's about to show us how he transforms a pile of salvaged parts into an actual working amphibious vehicle. And we're not talking about some half-baked experiment here. Yeah, you heard that right. This thing's gonna cruise on land and water like it owns both territories. So grab your favorite snack, maybe a cold drink too, and settle in for the ride because this build is gonna blow your mind in ways you didn't even know were possible. Here we go. So Don starts by raiding the family's old 2001 Peugeot partner for parts, and before you ask, yes, the family was done with it anyway. First thing he checks, the power plant, a 614 cubic centimeter industrial V-twin that pumps out 15 kilowatts that's 20 horsepower for those keeping track at home. This little gasoline engine might not sound like much compared to your average car, but trust me, it's got some serious potential when you're building something this specialized. These industrial engines are built tough as nails too. With the engine sorted and tested, Don grabs a rear axle from an old Lada Vaz 2101 and gets to work making it smaller. This isn't just a trim job, he's essentially re-engineering the whole thing to fit his vision. This shortened axle is going straight into the heart of the vehicle, complete with brake rotors and calipers borrowed from that Peugeot partner we mentioned earlier. Here's where it gets really clever. He's setting up each brake caliper with its own master cylinder, creating completely independent brake control for each side. Why go through all this trouble? Because that's how you get differential brake steering. Basically, you brake one side harder to turn, just like how tanks maneuver. Time to talk brakes, because this setup is pretty genius when you think about it. Don's ordering hydraulic clutch master cylinders for this setup, since they've got just one output line, exactly what he needs for clean, simple control. Now, nobody's making guarantees about how long these clutch cylinders will last in a brake system, but similar MacGyver-style setups have worked surprisingly well before, so fingers crossed and full steam ahead. Power's gonna flow through the left half-axle output, which gives us a massive gear reduction that would make any engineer smile. Once the axles cut down to the right length, measure twice, cut once, as they say, Don switches out those ancient drum brakes for modern disc brakes. Here's the cool part that'll save you headaches if you ever try this. No welding needed to mount the brake supports, which means less heat stress on the components. He does run into a snag when one half axle turns out too skinny for the job, but nothing a little MIG welding can't fix. Just build up some steel on there layer by layer and problem solved. It's like 3D printing with molten metal. Those brake rotors come with cooling fins too which is smart thinking. Nobody wants their brakes overheating in the middle of nowhere, especially when nowhere might be the middle of a lake. And let's be real, rebuilding old brakes beats dropping serious cash on brand new ones any day of the week. Plus you learn something in the process. This brake and axle assembly connects to some tractor PTO power takeoff components. Yeah, actual tractor parts, cause why not? That's the secret sauce for getting power to those rear wheels that'll drive the tracks when this thing's crawling over terrain. These agricultural components are built to handle serious abuse, which is perfect for our amphibious adventure machine. With these final touches, including some careful alignment work, the brake system's good to go, and Don can tackle the powertrain next. Quick refresher for anyone wondering, the powertrain includes everything that makes your vehicle move forward, from the engine all the way to where the rubber meets the road, or water in this case. The welding gets interesting when Don hits those PTO forks, and by interesting I mean challenging. They start spitting and spattering like crazy, throwing little molten metal fireworks everywhere. Turns out they've got more carbon in them than expected, which changes the whole welding game. But after a bit of persistence and probably some creative language, the welds start flowing nice and smooth like butter on hot toast. Meanwhile, he's working on bearing housings, with one piece cooling down in the lathe chuck as we speak. Metal machining is all about patience, folks. His original plan involved using simple pipe for the housings. But that idea hit a wall fast when reality checked in. See, he'd have to weld extra metal inside the pipe to create a surface for the bearing to sit against, and getting good welds inside a pipe is about as fun as dental surgery. Plus, there's the whole safety issue with welding zinc-coated steel, 
That stuff can release some seriously nasty fumes if you're not careful, and nobody wants a trip to the hospital. The lathe becomes Don's best friend as he machines custom axles and threads, plus turns flanges for this crazy tracked amphibian. It's like watching a sculptor, but with metal and way more precision. He's mixing traditional turning work with modern MIG welding techniques to create protective shields around the wheel hubs. Can't have water or debris getting in there and ruining the party. Speaking of water, he's also picked up some specially designed waterproof wheel hubs for the idler wheels because regular seals just won't cut it when you're literally driving underwater. That modified Lada Fiat rear axle with its shiny new disc brakes, it's handling the power transmission duties like a champ. And those tractor PTO parts and joints aren't just for show, they let him adjust where the whole skid steering unit sits, giving the vehicle better ground clearance for obstacles and making repairs way easier down the line when maintenance is needed. While Don wraps up this phase, and probably takes a well-deserved coffee break, let's talk about the mastermind behind this madness. Don's not just some weekend tinkerer with a few tools in his garage, this guy's a legit machinist and engineer who lives and breathes DIY challenges. His YouTube channel is basically a goldmine of practical craftsmanship, covering everything from clever fixes that'll save your bacon, to serious machine restoration work that would make professional shops jealous. The man knows his stuff inside and out, and more importantly, he shares it all without holding back trade secrets, giving viewers both education and inspiration to tackle their own projects. If you want to see more of Don's incredible builds and maybe learn a thing or two, his channel's definitely worth checking out and subscribing to. Those tractor PTO components and joints do double duty. They raise the entire unit up like a mechanical elevator, giving the vehicle more height off the ground for better obstacle clearance. This isn't just about looking cool, though it does, it makes working underneath it way less of a headache when you're not eating dirt. Up next, Don tackles the skid steer differential brake carriage frame. This beast runs on a 20 horsepower engine connected to a Peugeot partner gearbox with a CVT, continuously variable transmission playing the role of clutch, no more grinding gears or burnt clutch smell. Steering and braking happen through side brakes operated by hand levers within easy reach, and there's a thumb throttle for controlling speed. Pretty intuitive setup when you think about it, way simpler than traditional steering wheels and pedals that wouldn't work well in an amphibious environment anyway. Time for some shock absorption, because nobody wants their spine compressed like an accordion. Don fabricates axle dampers for the rear using sheet steel and more of those versatile PTO parts. Seriously, tractor parts are like the Lego blocks of heavy machinery. These dampers soak up the jarring forces when you hit the brakes hard or accelerate like you're late for dinner. Think of it like this. Shocks and struts basically turn movement energy into heat through friction, smoothing out your ride so you're not bouncing around like a pinball. After that engineering magic, he focuses on supporting the clutch and CVT shafts, because unsupported spinning parts are a recipe for disaster. Building engine mounts that can handle vibration without cracking, and putting together the prop shafts that'll transfer all that spinning goodness where it needs to go. The Rotec V-Twin 20 horsepower engine goes in next. It's like watching the heart transplant of this mechanical beast Following that comes custom drive shaft fabrication, which requires precise measurements and more metalworking magic. Don experiments with different pilot seats to find the right fit. Comfort matters when you're piloting an amphibious tank, trust me, and gets the clutch shaft properly supported with precision bearings. He tops off the gearbox and differential with fresh oil, the lifeblood of any mechanical system, 
hooks up the battery using a pillow block bearing for support because even batteries need love. The framework construction continues relentlessly, tying all these components together like a 3D mechanical puzzle. This new frame is rock solid with zero flex, no more worrying about the gearbox and engine doing their own dance routine. Everything mounts on rubber bushings attached to the chassis, which keeps those engine vibrations from rattling your teeth out or loosening important bolts over time. Safety first because being cool is pointless if you're in the hospital, Don adds a proper roll bar that could probably support a small building and professional-grade mounting points for the pilot seat. Then comes the hydraulic brake steering system, a beautiful piece of engineering built from Lada hydraulic clutch master cylinders, brake fluid reservoirs, and carefully bent steel component. Pull one lever, and that side's brake caliper engages with satisfying mechanical precision, making the vehicle turn like it's pivoting on a dime. Pull both levers together, and you stop faster than a kid caught with their hand in the cookie jar. The right lever's got a bonus feature, a snowmobile-style thumb throttle for controlling engine speed, because why use your whole hand when your thumb will do? Thanks to the CVT working in harmony with both the gearbox differential and rear axle differential, you never need to shift gears. It's like driving an automatic but cooler and more apocalypse-ready. Chassis construction starts with a beefy steel frame that'll support the entire tracked amphibious vehicle hull. This isn't some flimsy go-kart frame we're talking about. This framework needs to be rigid enough to handle whatever terrain or water gets thrown at it. From rocky shores to muddy swamps, Don breaks out the angle grinder to weld square tubing and free-cutting steel together, sparks flying like a 4th of July show. This method's way faster than messing around with a cutoff saw and trying to get all your clamp angles perfect like you're building fine furniture. Sometimes brute force efficiency wins. For the steel plates that'll form the hull, he switches to plasma cutting because when you need clean cuts and thick steel, accept no substitutes. Let's geek out about plasma cutting for a second because this stuff is genuinely cool. This technique uses super hot ionized gas, we're talking surface of the sun hot to basically melt and blow away metal from your cut line like a lightsaber through butter. You create an electric arc between an electrode and whatever you're cutting which generates this incredibly hot narrow plasma jet that cuts cleaner than a sushi chef's knife. Fun fact that'll impress your friends, plasma cutting was invented as an alternative to oxy-fuel cutting, and you can even do it underwater which sounds like science fiction but is totally real. When you need precision cuts on thinner materials without warping everything around it, high-tolerance plasma cutting is your best friend. The biggest advantages over other cutting methods, speed and efficiency, especially when you're dealing with thick metal that would take forever with a regular saw, plus you get those smooth edges that need minimal cleanup. track construction time. This is where things get really interesting. Don uses angle iron and round bar to create custom steel cleats, each one carefully measured and cut to match. These aren't just random metal pieces, they're precisely engineered to provide maximum grip. He then bolts these cleats onto strips of rubber conveyor belt material, yeah, the same stuff that moves your groceries at the checkout, but way tougher. These tracks work by creating friction against rubber tires for propulsion, kind of like a tank but with more DIY spirit. To make sure they grip properly and don't slip when things get wet or muddy, each cleat has a small lip designed to dig into the tire tread like tiny mechanical fingers. Simple but effective, sometimes the best engineering solutions are the ones that make you go, why didn't I think of that? The vehicle needs some finishing touches to be truly complete, so Don fabricates a sheet metal hood and instrument panel from scratch. No off-the-shelf parts here, everything's custom-made to fit perfectly. The dashboard gets loaded with all the essential switches and gadgets an amphibious pilot could want. 
He adds an oil temperature gauge to keep tabs on that V-twin engine because overheating in the middle of a lake is not ideal, plus an emergency battery cutoff switch for safety. When things go wrong, you want to kill power fast. The switch cluster he bought comes with built-in fuses, a voltmeter to monitor electrical health, and power outlets for charging phones or running accessories. Everything you need in one tidy package that looks like it belongs in a spy movie. That hood does double duty, keeping rain out while the mesh design ensures the engine stays cool even during extended runs. Form meeting function in perfect harmony. Time for all those crucial finishing touches that separate a rough prototype from a finished machine. LED lights go in with carefully drilled mounting holes. No crooked headlights on this build. A compact passenger seat gets built from marine-grade plywood. Not luxury, but it'll do the job and won't fall apart when wet. The hood scoop gets a complete redesign to improve airflow patterns, and an electric fan joins the party to keep that engine temperature in check during those long water crossings. Before painting, Don welds every single seam on the upper body to prep the tub properly. Watertight is the only acceptable standard here. Once everything's painted with proper primer and top coat and looking sharp enough to display at a car show, final assembly can begin with the excitement of Christmas morning. Final assembly kicks off with Don creating a new and improved hood scoop that'll protect the engine bay cooling fan from getting damaged by debris or overly curious wildlife. He modifies the engine and gearbox frame with surgical precision, cutting out unnecessary weight, every pound counts when you're trying to float, and making CVT belt adjustments easier for future maintenance. To boost the electrical system beyond the basic setup, he installs a car alternator with a custom belt tensioner that he fabricated himself. This beefy electrical setup can handle running two 12-volt winches simultaneously plus all the onboard lighting, because getting stuck in the dark is nobody's idea of fun. And just like that, after countless hours of work, problem solving, and probably a few choice words, this homemade marvel is ready for its maiden voyage into the unknown. So what exactly is an amphibious vehicle for those still wondering? Simply put, it's a machine that's equally happy traveling across land or through water, the ultimate go-anywhere vehicle that laughs at rivers and swamps. Pretty cool when you think about the engineering challenges involved, right? Take a moment to watch all the testing footage while we close out this absolutely mind-blowing build that pushes the boundaries of DIY engineering. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching this transformation as much as we did discovering it. It's not every day you see someone build their own amphibious tank from scratch. Seriously, go check out Don's channel right now. The stuff this guy creates is absolutely next level, and who knows, maybe you'll be inspired to start your own crazy project.